Today on People Now, Heidi Klum speaks out against Harvey Weinstein as he is stripped of his executive producer credit on Project Runway. But Georgina Chapman will return to Project Runway All-Stars following her split from Weinstein. We have details. Plus, Rose McGowan's bombshell rape allegation and who she told about it will explain. And social media backlash. Chrissy Teigen and more stars about to boycott Twitter after Rose McGowan's account was temporarily suspended. Blake Lively reveals that she was sexually harassed and filmed while she slept. How how she says it happened. Plus, Halloween is almost here, people. Trisha Yearwood already in the spirit, dressing up as her husband, Garth Brooks. And former NSYNC star Joey Fatone voices a rat in a new kid's Halloween movie. What better way to prep for the role than sampling some cheese, right? <laughs> there was Brie, there was Gouda, there was uh, Munster, there was Swiss. I can go on uh, forever. And the cast of Goodbye Christopher Robin joins us, the adorable 10-year-old star telling us about landing this life-changing role. Well, all my family cried instantly. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> Good morning, Facebook Live and People.com. Welcome to People Now. Today is Friday the 13th. Very spooky around here. People are feeling it. I will tell you that. Uh, to celebrate, we want to know what's your biggest superstition. It's our Facebook question of the day. Let us know your answers in the comments below. But first, here's what you need. Yeah, look at that. The wolf in front of the moon. It's Friday the 13th. It's scary. Here's what's uh, trending today. Heidi Klum is supporting the, quote, brave women who have spoken out against Harvey Weinstein in the wake of his sexual harassment scandal. The supermodel and Project Runway host tells people exclusively, in part, I wish I could say that the horrible stories I read about Harvey Weinstein are a rare occurrence in our society, but that is simply not the case. We would be naive to think that this behavior only happens in Hollywood. She goes on to say that she thinks it would be hard to find a woman, herself included, who has not had an experience where they have felt intimidated or threatened by a man using his power, position, or physical stature. Her statement comes on the heels of Weinstein being stripped of his executive producer credit on the Lifetime reality show competition. The movie mogul has been co-producing Project Runway along with Buna Murray Productions since 2012. A source tells People it's unclear what will happen going forward as the Weinstein company owns a majority in Project Runway. Weinstein's estranged wife, Georgina Chapman, is going to continue to be part of Project Runway franchise. Chapman returning to the judges' table for season six of Project Runway All-Stars. A rep confirmed to People Thursday that production has already completed, but they've not determined an air date. The 41-year-old uh, Marquesa designer who has two children with Weinstein has appeared on the show since its premiere in 2012. On Thursday, People reported that Weinstein checked into a luxury resort in Arizona after jetting out of Los Angeles on Wednesday. The source revealing the movie mogul was staying at a five-star hotel, which boasts a spa and a golf course, because he, quote, doesn't want to go to a place where he can't use his cell phone. Another source close to the situation says, quote, his team set him up at a secure place to get him the help he needs, he knows, and wants help. Now onto this. On Thursday, Rose McGowan's access to her Twitter account was restored, and she celebrated by firing off a series of angry tweets directly accusing Harvey Weinstein of rape and slamming the people that she thinks covered for the movie mogul over the years. Addressing all of these tweets to Jeff Bezos, who is the founder and CEO of Amazon, McGowan wrote, quote, I told the head of your studio that HW raped me. Over and over I said it. He said it hadn't been proven. I said I was proof. In one of several follow-up tweets, she personally called out Bezos to, quote, stop funding rapists, alleged pedos, and sexual harassers. I love Amazon, but there is rot in Hollywood. A spokesperson for Weinstein has said, quote, any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein. In a New York Times article published last week, it was revealed McGowan was part of a $100,000 settlement with Weinstein in 1997, following an encounter in a hotel room during the Sundance Film Festival. McGowan's return to Twitter followed her account's temporary suspension amid her multiple sexual harassment and assault allegations against Weinstein earlier this week. A Twitter spokesperson said in a statement to People on Thursday that McGowan's account was, quote, temporarily locked because one of her tweets included a private phone number, which violates our terms of service. Twitter is proud to empower and support the voices on our platform, especially those that speak truth to power. We stand with the brave women and men who use Twitter to share their stories. Twitter's explanation wasn't good enough for some stars who are now promising to boycott the site after McGowan's temporary suspension. Celebrities including Chrissy Teigen and Gina Rodriguez are joining the hashtag Women Boycott Twitter movement. The hashtag quickly gained traction on Thursday, encouraging women and their allies to silence the social media platform on Friday, October 13th, by vowing not to tweet for one whole day. 
Now about the decision, Tegan wrote, quote, ladies, let's do this, not because of hate, but because I love this platform and know it can be better. They need to see that we matter. She explained that she was boycotting to, quote, stand with the victims of sexual assault, online threats, and abuse. After posting her initial promise to join the movement on Thursday, Tegan followed up with another tweet just minutes afterward, showing some hateful responses that she had received after her announcement. She captioned the screenshots with hashtag this is why. Meanwhile, Gina Rodriguez announced that she would be canceling her plans to live tweet during the season four premiere of her CW show, Jane the Virgin tonight, saying, quote, I stand with my sisters. Mark Ruffalo, Billy Eichner, Alyssa Milano, Andy Richter, and even Marnie the dog all agreed to lend their support and silence their Twitter accounts for the day as well. With Kathy Griffin clarifying the idea behind the movement in one of her tweets saying, quote, hashtag women boycott Twitter will not silence us, but Twitter will make much less money because of fewer clicks. I'm in. Blake Lively is another celebrity opening up about her own experiences with sexual harassment after several female stars have come forward following those allegations of sexual misconduct against Harvey Weinstein. Lively revealed her, quote, terrifying experience with sexual harassment allegedly at the hands of a makeup artist, telling the Los Angeles Times Thursday that the artist was saying inappropriate things to her and insisted he put her lipstick on with his finger. Lively went on to say, quote, I was sleeping one night on location and I woke up and he was filming me. I was clothed, but it was a very voyeuristic, terrifying thing to do. Lively says she told producers about the issue, but that nothing happened after she spoke out. Instead, she claims she was approached about a different incident, this time about her dog defecating behind a toilet in her dressing room. The producers told her that that was, quote, a very serious issue and it can't happen again. She took her sexual harassment complaints to a lawyer, which opened up an investigation that caused the makeup artist to be removed from the project. But despite his removal, Lively said it doesn't prevent him from working in the industry. And though Lively told The Hollywood Reporter on Tuesday that she never had any idea about the Harvey Weinstein allegations, she said she hopes women continue to speak out, saying, quote, it's important that we don't stand for this and that we don't focus on one or two or three or four stories. It's important that we focus on humanity in general and say that is unacceptable. Very well said. And now, guys, we switch gears to this. NeNe Leakes is speaking out about the heckling incident that got her fired from the Great Escape Tour, calling it a, quote, breakdown. On an Instagram Live on Thursday, the Real Housewives of Atlanta star first thanked her fans and followers for supporting her through the tough time, then addressed the October 7th incident when she told a heckler at an Oakland, California stand-up show that she hoped she got raped by her Uber driver on the way home. During that live chat where she was addressing the incident, she said, a lot of people know me as Nini, who's laughing and talking. A lot don't know me as Nini, who would break down. I actually had a real breakdown. She goes on to tell her followers, trust and believe I'm so okay. I'm in a great place today. I can't say I haven't been in a great place these last few days. I'm so okay with everything. I just haven't talked a lot or spoken out a lot. Leaks was slated to host a November concert featuring girl group Escape, including her Real Housewife co-star Candy Burris. However, the band announced Thursday that they were, quote, dismayed by the remarks that Leaks made. Kind of a bizarre story there yes. and interesting to hear her sort of explanation of the whole thing. So we'll see what happens with all that. Yes, keep you posted. Well, let's check in with Facebook Live. We've been talking your number one superstition in honor of today's date, Friday the 13th. Ooh, so spooky. I didn't realize it was, this, today. It was the 13th till today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ali uh, says, yeah, I always <laughs> knock on wood. Can never be too careful, people. I do that one. Here's a superstition. Jesse says, when driving over railroad tracks, I lift my feet for good luck, like in the car. Oh, interesting. Hmm, never heard about that. No. Uh, I know someone that every time they, they drive through a yellow light, they have to knock, knock on the ceiling yeah, of the car. I, yeah. I used to do that, yeah. Wow, superstitions, <laughs> everybody. Uh, keep the Facebook comments coming in. <laughs> We're going to check in with you again soon, but first, Andrea, more for us in Star Trek. Yes, you're talking superstitions. Well, we are kicking off Star Trek today with a pretty brilliant Halloween costume, keeping it in the Halloween theme. Trisha Yearwood is dressing up like her husband, Garth Brooks, for the latest episode of her Food Network show, Trisha's Southern Kitchen. She posted a sneak peek of her costume to Instagram, captioning the photo, this is not a TBT. This is Saturday's episode of Trisha's Kitchen. Do I make a good Garth? Well, I think she does. To achieve the look, Yearwood wore a black and white shirt, very similar to the one her husband of almost 12 years wore on the cover of his 1992 album, The Chase. She completed the look with a headset mic, blue jeans, fake facial hair, and to top it all off, a black cowboy hat. Hairstylist Glenda Martin also joined the picture dressed as Yearwood with a curly blonde wig and a brown blazer. I think they look amazing, and she looks so great as a serious Garth Brooks there. <laughs> you can catch the full episode on October 14th at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Food Network. Well, the country crooner isn't the only celeb getting ready for Halloween. 
On Thursday, Lauren Conrad shared this adorable picture of her son Liam in a lamb costume for their trip to the pumpkin patch. So adorable. The designer herself was dressed to theme in an orange top that fits right in with the fall season. Conrad has been keeping very busy launching her autumn range for her LC Lauren Conrad for Cole's runway collection. She told People why it's so important to her that her collection is now size inclusive, saying, quote, it was just waiting until we had the opportunity to expand the size range. I was really excited to do it with this collection because I wanted to do it in a big way and not just sort of introduce it with any collection. I thought that it would be fun to do it in a way where we can celebrate. Well, you can check out a few pieces from the collection on People.com. 79-year-old Jane Fonda is showing us all that age is just a number while posing unretouched for the November issue of Town & Country. The black and white cover shows the actress in a collared shirt, oversized earrings, and chain link necklace. Fonda, who recently appeared in L'Oreal's Paris fashion show alongside Helen Mirren, has been open and honest about her approach to aging in Hollywood. Although she was recently shocked during a September interview on Megyn Kelly Today after Megyn asked why she wasn't, quote, proud to admit that she's had work done. Fonda, who ignored the initial question, responded by saying, Good attitude, good posture, take care of myself. But let me tell you why I love this movie, Our Souls at Night, rather than plastic surgery. Meanwhile, the star was less inclined to talk about her upcoming projects during Town & Country's interview. Preoccupied with the news surrounding President Donald Trump and his tweets that North Korea will be, quote, met with fire and fury. The actress, who became an activist over 30 years ago, opened up about the current administration, saying, With everything going on in the world, our country, it's really hard to talk about myself or entertainment right now. I'm almost 80, and so to say that I've never experienced this kind of nightmare before in my life is saying something. If I can give any advice, it's this. We mustn't normalize this presidency. In her 2005 memoir, My Life So Far, Fonda elaborated on the elusive idea of perfection, admitting that although she's flawed, she will continue to learn, saying, I will never be perfect, perfect, but I will continue to evolve toward that. Well, some great words of advice from a true Hollywood icon. And those are your Star Treks for today. Stay with us, guys. Former NSYNC member Joey Fatone is talking all things Halloween for his new movie, A Witch's Ball. Plus, country star Jason Aldean resumes his tour 11 days after the Las Vegas shooting with a few special guests in the crowd. Stick around. This is King Cutie in People. His Royal Highness, Prince George Alexander Louis of Cambridge. These are George's parents, George's home, his Nana, the Queen, and his staff of 644 Englishmen. This is George's dog, Lupo, who inspired his favorite book, The Adventures of the Royal Dog, Lupo. One George will share now that he's a big brother. People. The details make the story. Don't miss this week's People. Hey, Logan Paul, it's JoJo. I'm just saying that we need to get together, do a YouTube video, and um, I'm gonna give you a JoJo makeover and make you look like this, so let's do it. All right, Logan Paul, you ready for a JoJo Siwa collaboration? I know we are, let's make this happen. All right, now when Siwa isn't YouTubing, the 14-year-old social media sensation is starring alongside Nick Cannon on Nickelodeon's upcoming show, Lip Sync Battle Shorties. They have an epic Halloween special out this Sunday, and when Siwa stopped by the People Now studio, she opened up about her funny man co-host and who his daughter is fangirling over these days, watch. Nick Cannon was hilarious. He was like, he was so fun to work with. He FaceTimed his daughter one day from set and he FaceTimed her and the daughter was like, whoa. <laughs> and I was like, who are you talking to? And cause she could like hear me and she was like, that's JoJo. Oh, that's like, so it was cool. so cute, it was so cute. Um, no, he is just hilarious. He was really nice too. Like he was just, he was like a good partner. Like just. Yeah. This is Jennifer Lawrence in People. This is Jennifer photobombing Taylor Swift and Sarah Jessica Parker and Liam Hemsworth, proving that while we all love the fashion of the red carpet, it's people who steal the show. People, the details make the story. I want this to not be something that's gonna be a downer for, for, for the rest of the night. I want this to be, I wanna play the show for you guys that the people in Las Vegas came to see and didn't get a chance to. Jason Aldean kept his promise to fans when he resumed his They Don't Know tour in Tulsa, Oklahoma Thursday evening. The country star was back on stage just 11 days after gunman Steven Paddock opened fire on a crowd of 22,000 concert goers from his 32nd floor hotel room, leaving 58 people dead and over 500 people injured. During the concert, Aldean opened up to fans about the ordeal saying, there's a lot of good people in this world and a lot of them are in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Several shooting survivors traveled to Oklahoma for the performance, including Las Vegas couple Ryan and Lindsay, who helped save a little girl's life. Tulsa's uh, base radio station K95.5 gifted the couple uh, tickets to the show, writing on Facebook, these two were saving lives in the Las Vegas shooting. A week and a half later, they're in Tulsa, finally getting to finish the Jason Aldean concert. Prior to resuming his tour, Aldean returned to Las Vegas with his wife, his uh, pregnant wife, Brittany, where the couple met with hospitalized survivors. Brittany, who was backstage during the massacre, posted this photo of the pair, captioning the post, feel surreal being back in Vegas today, visiting some of the strongest people we have ever met, fighting the toughest battle of them all for their lives. You have helped us try to begin to start the healing process by seeing the strength each one of you have. Thank you for today. We will never forget. Well, Joey Fatone's newest project is a bewitching movie featuring magic, mystery, and a talking rat. It's true. When Joey stopped by People Now, he gave us all the deets. Watch this. This little young girl named Beatrice, she is uh, basically a valedictorian. There's a witch's school, like almost like a high school. She's graduating and she's the valedictorian. When the valedictorian, they get this kind of crystal ball that they take for a day or so, I forget exactly how many days, and they have to bring that back and have like a speech. Congratulations, you've completed your final exam. You'll be celebrated as a full witch at the ball. I won't let anything happen to it. Well, some girl, I guess, didn't like that she was valedictorian, one of the other witches, and actually did a little spell where they broke the crystal ball. Basically, okay. this, this little glass ball that you're supposed to have, and it's never been put back together. So she's nervous because now she broke it, she has to go on a journey to put this ball back together before she gets to the witch's ball. The character that I play is Muggs. He's, just, he's, a, he's a rat. How come mysterious journeys never start at the mall? I mean, it's always got to be some haunted forest. So I help her basically kind of go along her journey. I'm kind of her... her pet rat, not the, not the brightest rat ever in, in the <laughs> life, but uh, bright enough to help her out through the journey. He loves cheese. <laughs> because I want to eat stinky fancy cheese and no one else will sneak me in. Hi. He likes to sing, He's a, he just likes to make songs up, which I do as well, so maybe that has a little bit of me in it. Was He's there cool any dude. sort of special prep you had to do to play a rat? Yeah, um, I ate a lot of cheese. What kind of cheese? Um, Important. Uh, wow, there's just too many of them, though, actually. <laughs> I tried to do an assortment. I don't know how many, but there was Brie, there was Gouda, there was uh, Munster, there was Swiss. I can go on uh, forever. But it was, it was it, no, not really. Basically, it was, <laughs> hey, you wanna, we want you to, we love to play this character, Muggs. He's a rat. And, you know, read the script, let us know what you think. And I was like, you know what, I love, I, loved, I thought the script was awesome. It's mm. very cute. As a, and for me, I'm huge Halloween. I love Halloween. And anything to be a part of maybe a Halloween movie or a Halloween show or something, this was that one of those things where I was like, you know, it's going to be kind of cool for my kid to enjoy. She's seven years old. My other one's 16. She's a little older now, but I'm sure she'll watch it with her. So it's kind of cool. Well, there you have it. Catch Joey Fatone in a Witch's Ball, premiering Saturday, October 14th at 9, 8 central on Discovery Family. This is Jennifer Aniston, who told people her beauty secret. It's called water. This is Julia Roberts, who confessed her million-dollar beauty treatment. It's called sleep. This is Courtney, who escapes to the spa. And Michelle, who swears by good lighting. And this is Beyonce, who woke up like this. These are people's insider trading tips to beauty from the world's most beautiful people. The details make the story. Don't miss this week's people. The creatures in the story are toys. They're toys, but the woods are real. And the size is wrong. The bear should be smaller. Size of a little brother. There. Yes. Yes, that's it. Blue, are we writing a book? I thought we were just having fun. That's the adorable Will Tilston and Domal Gleeson in the highly anticipated Goodbye Christopher Robin. The film, which also stars Margot Robbie, is our Toyota People Pick of the Day and tells the real story behind the childhood classic Winnie the Pooh. So when director Simon Curtis, actress Kelly McDonald, and 10-year-old Will stop by the People Now Studios, we had to ask what surprised them the most about this complicated real-life tale. Check it out. Mommy says you're writing a book to stop people going to war. Mm. I think your book is a jolly good idea. You're the only one that does. I'd really like if you wrote a book for me. I'd definitely read it. It's almost like Chris Robin is two people in one person because in the breakfast scene, for example, he is um, very angry at Nu. But then straight after, a smile comes upon his face and his father makes him happy. And it's really weird, and it's weird how his father and um, Christopher Robin 
and how their relationship is sort of mingles into something very peculiar. If you'd like to speak to Mr. Milne, please be so good as to telephone to him and make an appointment. Oh, but I don't want to speak to Mr. Milne, you see. I want to speak to Christopher Robin. I'm afraid that won't be possible today. I, mean, I think it was pretty normal for the time for a family of that class to hire a nanny to basically um, bring their child up, and that, that was normal. I think what happened um, to the Milnes and the fame that their, um, you know, their story was just everywhere, um, I think that was the highly unusual thing. What will you call me in the book? Your real name, Christopher Robin. Do you remember, well what you did when you got the call, it's happening? Did you, did you celebrate? What was the moment like for you? Um, well, all my family cried instantly. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> That's so great. a lot of crying. And uh, I was at my auntie's house at that point, and um, they had a pool, so uh, I jumped into it. <laughs> <laughs> what better way to celebrate? Just a cannonball in the pool? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, how has life changed since doing this film? You're only 10. Is, is there a difference between before and after? I was um, walking home uh, from school, and uh, this bus went along, and I just saw me outside. Face <laughs> on the bus. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. You've made it now. Like, Face on the bus. Like that's it, right? I I've completed goal. life now. <laughs> <laughs>Well, guys, Halloween is right around the corner, so you got to get those party ideas flowing, but no need to worry because People TV has all the best and delicious ideas to kick your trick-or-treating off right. Check out this little tease on how to make a jack-o'-lantern cheese ball, which sounds amazing to me. Watch. This jack-o'-lantern cheese ball brings the spookiness and the spice. In a large bowl, combine two eight-ounce packages of softened cream cheese, two ounces of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, three chopped scallions, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. With your hands, form the mixture into a ball and then flatten the top just slightly to form a pumpkin shape. Wrap in plastic wrap and freeze for at least an hour until it's nice and firm. Place crushed nacho cheese flavored tortilla chips in a bowl and roll the cheese ball all around in them. I, I, that looks very, very good, and I love cheese. Give me much. any cheese ball, and I'm going to be happy. <laughs> That's the truth. I love the holiday. Any holiday should have cheese balls. Yeah, every day. All right. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, go ahead. Let's check in with Facebook Live. We're all like obsessing about cheese now. We're celebrating Friday the 13th by talking about your biggest superstitions. So Carol says, "I hold my breath going into tunnels." That's that's one. Oh, I do that too, but it's not. It's only just to see if I can hold it the whole time. Like who can hold their breath the longest in the car? All right. It's mm. in a long, boring road trip. That's really fun. Uh, Karen says. I have to touch a button every time I see a hearse. Someone once told me if I didn't, I'd be the next to die. <laughs> oh my God. That is something that's horrible to have to live with that then for the rest of your life. Uh, Lori says 11 11, 222, make a wish, all same digits on the clock. Well, I knew the 11 11, I didn't know the 222. Me either. And then now, I just would be 323 every number. Now, every time I see it, I'm going to have to. I will say this it is shocking to me how many times I look at a clock at 11 11. That happens a lot. What does it mean? <laughs> I don't know. I better make a wish. <sighs> Coming up next week, singer Jesse James Decker dishes on her new album and maybe some superstitions. We don't know. Plus, how she's prepping for baby number three. Plus, actor Frank Grillo gives us the inside scoop in the Netflix uh, film Wheel Man. He's, I don't think he's a very superstitious guy. I don't. I he's would. like a boxer, and he's like takes things into his own hands. Yeah, that's what our guess is. Well, thanks for watching. For now, we leave you with one last thing from actress Liz Gillies. Have a good weekend. Bye, guys. Hi, I'm Liz Gillies, and this is one last thing. Last text I received, um, I think I had um, my makeup artist send me a picture that we took a selfie. Last splurge, I keep buying rugs off eBay, Moroccan uh, rugs, that's what I like to do. Last girls' night, um, my castmate Natalie and I went out and we had a lovely little girls' night, and it falls into the next one. I saw Mother with Natalie, and that was the last movie I saw in theaters. And it was, um, yeah, if you've seen it, it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot. I'm so sorry.